The evolution of practice management continues with Amica's Attorney 2010 Small Firm Edition and File Intake Enhancements. Back in Amica's Attorney 2009, we introduced Customized File Intake, which allowed you to change, based on the file type, the interview process required for the creation of a new file. This was achieved by going to the Files module and clicking on New to create a new file and depending on the file type selected, a different interview process would occur. So what we're looking at now are the basic file intake steps, with a couple of additional things defined, team members assigned, and file billing rate. But what we've done in 2010 has taken that a step further. Let me show you. I'm going to briefly run through creating the new file here. So we won't leave our short file name as that. We'll give it a proper name, say blank litigation, for example. And of course, the file type is going to be litigation. Now at this point, in 2009 and also in 2010, if you have a custom intake process defined for the litigation file type, the Save and Open button is going to change to a Next button because there's more work yet to be done. But we're not focused on that here. We're focused on the new items available in 2010, which don't occur until after we filled in these steps. So let's identify our client. Harold Blank will do. And we're going to identify the billing category, the team members assigned, which is going to be Heather Gavel for now, and the file billing rate. And then we click on Save and Open, just like we always have to create our new file. Here's the difference in 2010. These four additional items, checking conflicts, applying a precedent series of events, generating a document, and sending an email, can all be defined by the administrator for specific files or all files that are created within your firm. So if a conflict check hasn't been done, you can't proceed to work on the file. Same goes for applying a precedent, generating a document, or sending an email. And this is all configured back over in the Amicus Administrator. Before I show you how to set this up, let's see how it works. Let's run a conflict check. When you click on Check Conflicts, it immediately knows who to check against. In this case, Harold Blank. So let's run that conflict search. The conflict check looks good. Harold is the only Harold we have in our database, so that's fine. We'll close out of there, and now we'll move on to applying the precedent, which in this case has been defined as a limitation period warning with four reminders. Click on Apply Precedent, and we instantly get our four or five or ten events automatically created on the file. Think about how much time that's just saved. And then we can, of course, generate a document, which we're going to need if we're going to retain this client. So we'll click on Generate Document, and the system automatically knows which document to generate for which individual. And we can save that back to the file as a completed document. And then finally, we have the ability to send an email to the client as well, which will launch your default email application with an email addressed specifically to this client, so Harold at blank.com. And all of this is going to be done automatically on the creation of every new file, simply by the administrator in your firm setting up a few key options. Let's go have a look. As with all global configuration in Amicus Attorney Small Firm, we do it in the Amicus Administrator. And here, we go to the Configure menu and over to Files. And all we need to do now is go to the New File Intake tab. Now, I don't want to take up too much of your time with a long lesson on how to modify intake pages for all of your different file types. Suffice to say, you've got a lot of options here. But what I want to show you is how to basically modify the file intake process for every new file that's created in your firm. And to do that, all we have to do is make sure this radio button is set to the default, which says to modify the new file basic intake form used for all new files. Here, we can select from the basic fields and add new things. So if it's a requirement in our firm that we assign the client ID and the matter ID to all new files, we simply check those boxes. And if we want to make it required so that people can't create a new file without assigning those items, we simply right click and say is required. And we get a red asterisk indicating that indeed those items are now required on all new file intake to be done from this point forward. But that's not really what we're here for. What I really want to show you is how to configure those action items. And that's over on the right hand side. See what we're defining now are the core fields and those have always been available. But what we're also going to do is look at the action items and those are the new items available in Amicus 2010. And this is where we identify whether or not we're going to force a conflict check to be done, force a precedent to be applied, force a document to be generated, and force an email to be sent 
on that new file intake. And I had all four checked, which was why all four options came up for me. Any one of these, of course, can be made required. If we want to require a conflict check, again, a simple right click and is required is all you need to do. And then you click OK and it's done. Every new file from this point forward will have those four items as part of the intake process. Easy, isn't it? Back in the Amicus Attorney Office, the blank litigation file's now been created, but more importantly, we have an email sent to the client, we have a conflict check done, we have a document generated, and if we look at the file itself, and look at the events on the file, all of those limitation period reminders have already been set on somebody's calendar, which is really nice. Thank you for watching. To find out more, or for a personalized demo, please visit www.amicusattorney.com or call 1-800-472-2289.